Hey guys, it's Jessica from Peace Love Books, and today I'm here with my April mid-month wrap-up. I feel like April just started, but it's already the 17th of the day I'm filming this, but I'm going to go through the books that I've read from the 1st to the 15th, and I've read 15 books so far, which is amazing. I've read, like, averaged a book a day. I don't read a book a day, but I read a lot at once, and I average probably an audiobook every two or three days, and then a physical book every two or three days, and it just, like, averages out that I'm reading about a book a day. So I also get a lot of my reading done on the weekends. I like slog through paperbacks during the week. It'll take me like five days to finish a paperback, but then it'll take me like half a day to finish a paperback on the weekend. So my reading schedule is very weird, but I do end up reading 15 books, which is awesome, and a lot of audiobooks, which is great. I'm excited. I read some really great stuff this month. A couple of disappointing things, so we'll get to what I read. Also, check out my sweatshirt. It says it's a good day to read more romance, and it's super cute. I really love the like pastel color vibe of this, so it's hella lovely. Use my code P15 down below. When am I not wearing a hella lovely sweatshirt? That's the question. So the first book I read in April was The 100,000 Kingdoms by N.K. Jemisin. I read this for my 24-hour reading vlog, which I will link down below. And I didn't love this. I went in, I think, with too high of expectations, and I don't enjoy fantasy like this. The fantasy I like is, like, heavy romance fantasy with not heavy on the fantasy. This one I was told I would love because of the romance, and she does have a romance, but I had a hard time liking this. She was, like, summoned to the kingdom and told she was, like, in line to inherit the throne and had to, like, compete, but it wasn't really a competition. I was not sure what the point was of her being there. She just had to, like, oversee some, like, kingdom and, like, talked to a lot of people, and there were weird things going on with the gods. So there was, like, three main gods that were kept as, like, slaves, and they had to listen to the people that, like, ruled them, and they, like, couldn't say no, and so they had an odd relationship. Like, they were all related, but they all were together in some way, and there's one that was a child, and it was, it was odd, and the writing was interesting and hard to really follow with the fantasy with it, so this wasn't my favorite. I gave it three stars, and I don't know if I'll continue on. Like, she did have a romance, but it wasn't really a romance, and I don't know if I liked it. Like, she liked the guy, and they got together, but I'm like, am I rooting for this relationship? I don't know. There wasn't, there just wasn't, like, an end goal to this book that I really understood. Like, was she trying to get this inheritance or not? Did she want it? How was she supposed to win it? And I don't, I don't know. So I feel like I wasn't smart enough to enjoy this book. So I gave it three stars. I really wanted to love it, but it just wasn't what I liked. But people have told me that the fifth season is a lot more readable than this one. So let me know if I should read the fifth season or not, if I didn't enjoy this one. I gave it three stars. It wasn't bad, but I just couldn't get into it. Then I read The Footman and I by Valerie Bowman. I listened to this on audiobook. I talked about it in that vlog as well, and it's a lot of fun. Our hero is a duke, and he, I think he's a duke. He's some sort of titled hero, and he was burned in the past. Someone left him for someone with more money, and he's like, I can't trust anybody, and now everybody who wants me wants me for my money, and so he decides to pose as a footman to try to see if any of the women coming out in society are good people and that he could marry, and so then his friends all form a bet, and they all decide side opposes servants, which is fun. So I think the other books are like his friend's books. And he ends up meeting our heroine and she is not like other girls. She cares about servants. She like uh, doesn't want them to work too hard. Like she feels bad when like she like spills something and they're blamed. And she doesn't like this guy that her mom wants her to marry. He's kind of gross. And so she's at this like house party that like the guy's friend invited them all to because it was like a chance for the guys to all be like servants and see all these women, so it was like a house party set up for this kind of ploy, and he meets her on the first night, and they instantly really like each other, and she falls for him, but obviously she's gonna figure out who he is, and she actually hates his real life person who he is. She's never met him, but she knows what he likes politically, and so she hates him, and says that she hates him, and it's really funny. I end up giving this, I think, four and a half stars out of five. It is very not steamy heavy. There's one steamy scene at the very end, so know that going into this, it's pretty tame, but it was really cute, and I enjoyed it. Then I listened to the audiobook of A Sweet Mess by J.C. Lee. This one I was really excited for. Our heroine owns a bakery, and this guy ends up breaking down in his car, and he's a restaurant reviewer, and so he still needs to, like, review something, so he stops by her bakery. He ends up accidentally getting a, like, child's 
birthday cake and it has it's like a peanut butter filling and it had gummy worms in it and he was like oh my god like I almost choked and died on these gummy worms it was disgusting so he wrote this scathing review and pretty much ruined her business and they rely a lot on like out of town visitors and now no one's coming and he ends up realizing his mistake but uh, while he was in town, they hooked up, and it was at a bar, they had no idea who each other was, and so he's like, I can't, re like, take it back, people are gonna know, I'm gonna ruin my reputation as a serious reviewer, and so he offers to hook her up with a gig at, on a cooking show, and so to give her publicity again for her restaurant or her bakery, and it goes from there. I was loving the beginning of this, but then it got pretty boring, and then one of my least favorite tropes showed up, and I was just like dang it, when books are going fine, this was like gonna be a four star, and then that happened in the last like 50 pages, I was just like, are we done yet? I don't care. So I felt really bad. I gave this three out of five stars. I know a lot of people haven't been loving this, and I was like, oh, but it looks so cute. It started out so cute. I was like, people are, so, they're wrong. There's, this is gonna be great. People were right. Three out of five stars. It wasn't bad, but there were just some choices that were made that I just wish the author didn't make. Then I read The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armitrod. I do not have my copy with me. I was sent a PR box with the physical copy. This doesn't come out until Tuesday, and I have a vlog going up on Wednesday, so keep your eye out for that. My sister currently has my copy. She is reading it right now because she was very excited to get it early, and I gave this four stars. It is book three in the From Blood and Ash series, and I enjoyed it. I do think that it had a, some slow parts and some things were kept to the end that I knew would be kept to the end that annoyed me because we've been waiting for it for three books but I did enjoy a lot of the secrets that were revealed and I I've said over and over again on my channel I hate it when a couple is like happy and in love and together and by this is book three of this couple in the same in the relationship and so we, following the same couple throughout a book series I don't love that and so I was kind of bored with their romance I know, so it, it was fine, but I ended up giving it four stars. Like I said, I really liked all the secrets that came out and things that they had to, to discover and do, but I do think some things like happened too easily and seemed like they were supposed to be a bigger deal than they were. Like it was like built up and then it was like, oh, and then we left. And I'm like, oh, okay. So four to five stars, it was fun. I can't wait for you all to read it. Then I read Wild Rain by Beverly Jenkins, and I forget whose review I read of this book, but Beverly Jenkins just writes very low angst books. I love angst, so I have to be in the right mood to go into a Beverly Jenkins book because I love her books, but the, her most of her newer stuff is very low angst. So this one is Spring, and Spring is Colton's sister? I think that was his name. He was in another series, and she is a, an independent woman. She has a really bad past, so we do learn a lot about her past and what she's had to go through to get to where she is, and she doesn't want any man. She doesn't want any children. She is just fine the way she is. A reporter comes into town wanting to do a story on her brother, who is a doctor, and they end up really liking each other. He ends up, like, I think he like loses his horse and she has and he like sprains his ankle so she has to let him stay at her house to like get better and they really like each other and she's not ashamed of the fact that she likes a man and she wants pleasure and she's not married and he starts to appreciate her for who she is and it's really sweet and slow and nice so there is someone like trying to I feel like it was trying to kill him so there's always like some extra murder plot happening in Beverly Jenkins books too, like some sort of mystery that we had to figure out. So I did enjoy this. I gave it four to five stars, but it's just very low angst, just very nice reading along, enjoying the story. So keep that in mind when you go into these, but I really enjoyed the audiobook for this one. Then I read I'll Be the One by Lila Lee. This one was so good. I gave it five out of five stars. Our heroine, she is plus size, but she loves to sing and dance, and her mother is very hard on her. I feel like I've read a couple books this month where the females are plus size and their mothers are awful about it, and I'm like, can I read a book about a plus size character whose mother loves her and appreciates her and doesn't tell her she needs to lose weight? But this one, her mother is constantly on her about how people would view her, and she pushes her a lot more towards singing because she says someone with your body shouldn't be dancing, and so she decides to try out out for this k-pop competition as a singer and a dancer and she gets in for both and this guy who's a celebrity ends up trying out as well and they have a little romance and this was just so cute like I already want to buy a physical copy of this and put it on my shelves because I loved it I love though like singing and dancing kind of books and like 
competition kind of books so this one was just like everything and the romance was adorable and she started getting making friends with the girls on the show and she's also bisexual and she's trying to understand her identity as an Asian girl who's bisexual and so she sees some people who also have similar sexualities that she has on the show and she's like oh I didn't think like I never see that represented so I never thought that I could be that and so she explores that identity as well which I really loved and this was was super cute and I'd recommend everybody read it five out of five stars then for my book club with my students at school we decided to read All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Dower this one is a World War II historical fiction and it was really good I didn't personally cry I didn't find anything that would make me cry in this one like I have with other historical fictions so this one follows our uh, one character who is a boy who is German he loves working on radios and like he's super smart and so he ends up actually having to work for the Nazis and it's very intense and then and he's an orphan too so he's at an orphanage with his sister and he is like taken when they figure out he has that skill and he works like tracking people down. I don't want to spoil anything but she is blind and she grew up in France with her father and then it's when like Germany occupies France and they have to run away and live with someone else and there's this like mysterious gemstone too that is in the picture and I really loved how the story's connected and I love the short chapter so this is a, a, a chunky book I think it's over oh wow I put this in upside down um I think it's over 500 pages it's like 500 so just over 500 pages but the chapters are very short they're like three to four page chapters so it goes by very quickly and I ended up loving both storylines but I think that the ending was a little rushed and I didn't love it so I don't remember if I gave this four or five stars but I loved the entirety of the book until the end and then I was like but what what and then we like were left hanging like there was something that wasn't answered and I was like am I supposed to like know the answer because I don't so it was it was fabulous and it was very serious and it was like terrifying because she is blind and we get her perspective and like some moments I was terrified for her but it was really good I see what the hype is I enjoyed this one then I listened to the audiobook of The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagradar and this one is a sapphic romance Nishat's a student and we get a little bit of her background about um, girls at school and girls that bully her at school and the beginning starts with her coming out to her mom like at some wedding and she is part of this class where they have to start a, a business so she decides to do henna and that kind of ties into the wedding because she did henna at the wedding and gave her the idea to do henna for this project they would sell like her art, art skills to other girls at school and what I loved about this book though is first of all her relationship with her sister they were super close and I loved how close they were and how much they spent time together and talked to each other but there's this new girl in school that our main character really likes but then she starts up her own henna business as a rival competition and it was interesting because she talked about cultural appropriation she's like you're not even from my culture why do you think like you're able to take it and monetize it and as part of this competition and I like this I will say that I didn't really understand why Nishat was like super into Flavia because like she just like looked at her and really liked her and I don't think there was more depth to their romance and then when like the competition rolled around and Flavia like didn't care that she was doing henna too and didn't understand where Nishat was coming from I didn't love that but I think the romance ended up being cute at the end and like I said I loved the sister bond that our main character had with her sister and how interesting her relationship was with her mom I really liked how that turned out at the end and so I gave this one four out of five stars I've been meaning to read this for forever and I finally got around to it and I think it was really fun I'm excited for this author's next book because it is fake dating which I'm super excited for but I ended up really enjoying this and I'm glad I read it then I read Black Sunshine by Karina Halley I was on Lacey's channel it with an interview with Karina Halley which was a lot of fun it was me Charles Desiree and Carrie all interviewing Karina Halley and it was a lot of fun but this one is a vampire romance and I will say I wish I liked it more than I did I ended up giving it two stars so this one I just I didn't love it it felt very not like Karina Halley's other books to me I love Karina Halley I just finished another one of her books this month and I which is going to be on my next wrap-up because I finished it yesterday but this one it just like I don't know our heroines in college and she read very young and it read very new adult-y and I didn't 
love it in the beginning. So I wrote in my review that it felt very info dumpy with the writing style. It was a lot of telling and not showing and I wasn't a big fan of that and our heroine learned something about her parents and just like instantly believed it and was like, oh my gosh, what? And like, I felt like it was too fast. Like it wasn't really realistic about her learning about like these vampires and everything and not questioning things. She just like blindly took them as they were. It was pretty slow. Like there were a couple of like really action-packed scenes that I liked of some things but then the rest of it was just like very slow and I didn't love it and I just there's not that much that I can say that I even liked about this book so I don't think I'll continue on with book two but I will say Wolf was a very interesting character so I would read his book because she's gonna write a book for him as well but this one in itself I didn't love and I feel really bad because I love Karina Halley and I had a great time talking to her about her new release but this one was just missing for me. Then I ended up reading Duchess of My Heart by Maya Banks. I found this on Hoopla and I was like, well, I haven't read this Maya Banks and I'm saving the last Highlander romance she has because she hasn't come out with her newest one in like seven years and I only have one left in the series to read and I don't want it to end. So I haven't gotten to that yet. But this one, our heroine was in a very abusive relationship and then the beginning is her figuring out her husband died and so she's super excited. She's a widow now. She doesn't mourn him in society. So people are very taken aback by her and they're like, you're an awful person and she doesn't care she does what she wants and she's best friends with this one guy and his brother is a duke and instantly hates her he's like you are something else you are just you need to like adhere to society's rules i don't know what you're doing and they end up spending more time together and it's their romance and i really like this i think i gave it four to five stars he just like really hates her in the beginning but i think he hates her because he kind of likes her and it was a lot of fun i liked it and i really liked her friendship with his brother and he actually accused his brother of like having an affair with her and he's like no we're just friends and then they fell in love so it was great and someone's trying to kill her too so there's a little bit of mystery thrown in there as well and you're like what's happening so I liked this one and he got like super overprotective of her when someone was trying to kill her and I love a good overprotective man who claims he hates her because you know he really likes her. Then I read A Week to be Wicked by Tessa Dare and I <laughs> literally laughed out loud in this book twice and I usually don't do that. I listen to the audiobook and this one our heroine loves fossils which I love scientist heroines and historical romances. She lives in Spindle Cove. This is book two in the Spindle Cove series. I didn't love book one but this one I gave five stars. So she is going to this duke because she thinks that he's going to try to go after her sister and she wants him to stop and I think she's like oh you're gonna ruin her or something. I don't remember why she doesn't want him to be with her but she tells him why don't you pretend you're with me because I think he needs either to get married or wait till he's 21 to get his inheritance and he's like broke and so then she says well I'll give you money if you run away with me and go to Scotland so I can go to this convention for scientists and he's like excuse me and he's not gonna go but then he ends up having to go and he has a really tragic past so he's terrified of riding in coaches and so he's like well if we go I gotta like ride on horseback and even though it would take them like not that long to go there in a coach so it ends up being a travel romance they run into a lot of antics and bad things happen and it's funny I don't want to spoil what was hilarious but there were a couple scenes that I'm like that did not just happen it was so funny and obviously they end up falling for each other along the way and they're not shy about like liking each other though so they do end up hooking up pretty pretty early on and I like that because we don't normally get that in historicals they usually have to like wait and be proper so this was a lot of fun I give it five stars if you want something that's funny check this one out then I read some books recommended by TikTok so I read Fighting Destiny by Amelia Hutchins and this one I gave three stars it's a fey romance she starts off she's a witch and she wants to steal this fey prince's crown she gets caught and then they end up having to work together to figure out who's murdering fey and witches which is really cool but it felt very rushed and underdeveloped and like something this author wasn't experienced in doing I don't know the author felt very like new and so this felt like a first book like she was trying to do so much at once and she shoved it all into this one book and so things were constantly happening and not really wrapped up and I'm like okay well, what was the point of that because you just like rushed into the next thing and so it felt like whiplash with the romance too and I gave it three stars because I really love the premise and I was really loving the beginning and then it just completely like started going all over the place and I was like what is happening also with the Faye in this world they end up like feeding through intimacy and they can force people to want them so that they can feed and he constantly threatened her to do that 
and I was like, you're literally threatening to rape her. So that's not attractive to me. And she's terrified of that though because something about that happened with her parents and so not cool. So I gave it three stars, probably on the low side of three. It had so much potential, but I just didn't love it. Then I read Visions and Heat by Nalini Singh, and this one I gave four stars. I loved this romance more than book one. It's about Faith, who is a F -sci, I think. She can, like, see the future, and she's been isolated her whole life and, like, used by the Psy, really for monetary gain. She's, like, worth billions of dollars because she can help them with things because she has visions. But she's also having these really dark visions of something that she doesn't know what it is and then Vaughn is a shifter and he kind of finds her and he's like what do they have at this compound like locked up and she escapes one day because she just like wants to find Sasha from book one and ends up running into Vaughn and they have they like their mates I love a good faded mates romance so I love Vaughn and Faith's relationship Faith has like literally never touched people though so they have to take it slow but Vaughn was just like you're mine and Sasha and Lucas are in this a lot from book one but I gave it four stars because I don't really care about the Psy plotline in this book. I don't care about the Psy and the council and like the secrets and like the network and I'm just like I really could care less about that and a lot of the end focused on that and I kind of lost interest in it. I was just like just give me the romance. I don't care about this plot at the background that's gonna thread through all the books. I don't care. Just let me have a good romance between the shifter and someone who's Psy. Like give it to me. So I use four to five stars. I really liked it. I'll probably continue on the series and hopefully I enjoy it more. Then I listened to the audiobook of Strictly Professional by Christina C. Jones. This one is pretty short and I don't know if I'll read book two though because of what happened at the end of book one. But this one I gave, I don't remember if I gave it four or five out of five stars, but our heroine, she is a lawyer and she gets a job at her uncle's office and she needs to like train under someone and so one of her first nights in town, she's at a bar, she meets a guy and they like really hit it off but then they're interrupted before anything can happen by her roommate. The next day she realizes he is the lawyer that's going to be training her at her uncle's office so it's forbidden, it's an office romance and and they have to end up working together a lot and they keep on like trying to not be together but then like they get jealous when they see each other with other people and it's really great and she also has a overbearing parents and they want her to marry someone and she's like absolutely not like I broke up with him for a reason and they keep on pushing him at her but she's really liking this new guy at work and it's really fun I really enjoyed it I don't know if I want to read book two though so I might but we'll see and the last book I read for the month that I'm going to share is Pretty Little Savage by Lucy Smoke this is book one in the six Sick Boys series and I read this for that TikTok video and this one I gave three out of five stars. I loved the writing so much better than Finding Destiny. Like I think the writer is great and I'd read more of her books but this one our heroine is Ava Avalon and she is getting in a lot of trouble. She like fights all the time and she is really annoying to me. She's like not like other girls so anybody like looks at her wrong she decides to like beat them up because she doesn't like them. I don't like that in my heroines. I'm just like why do you like seek out these situations and so she's about to get kicked out of, of her high school and someone approaches her and says you can go to this college you'll be dual enrollment and then we'll want you to stay at the college and it's a fresh start her mom is a drug addict really bad and so she decides to accept and it's the college is like run by the sick boys all their parents like own everything and so they see Ava and they're like um you're ours and she's like I'm not belonging to anybody no one can control me and like is really annoying about it but then she like lets them do that and like seeks them out and like goes places they want her to go even though she claims no one can control her and at one point they're like oh she's just not like other girls and that was annoying so I think I would have liked this if Ava wasn't as annoying to me as she was so I gave it three out of five stars it just like goes through party after party after party which again I didn't really care about I'm like she's in college so we're when is she going to these classes and doing her homework and she is always just like I don't care about anything or what anybody thinks but she still goes to these parties to see the guys and it's her romance with Dean but I think I like able a lot more like I like the other guys better than Dean and I feel like Dean just wasn't really fleshed out that much and they're part of this like really dark thing and they like talk about how they've like been raised to be like this but we don't even get a look at that until the very end and I would have loved that to be more of the story I feel like I just didn't care about all the parties and them like trying to control her and I'm like give me 
this dark side of you guys like it's a dark romance kind of like mafia-esque and so I wanted that and I feel like the author really missed that opportunity so I didn't really care for this one I gave it three out of five stars I wanted a lot more it had more potential than what it ended up giving me and those are the 15 books that I read this month so far let me know down below what your thoughts are on any of these or what you've read this month I would love to hear as always thank you so much for watching and have a good day